Join ESPN and the V Foundation in the fight against cancer. Visit v.org slash donate. Every single dollar benefits the V Foundation for cancer research. Former 49ers linebacker Reuben Foster was arrested three times in 2018, two of which were for domestic violence. San Francisco released Foster after his most recent arrest. He was then claimed on waivers by the Washington Redskins. Foster's former girlfriend and the victim in this case, Elisa Ennis, comments for the first time in this exclusive interview with ABC News' Lindsay Davis. What was your reaction when Reuben got signed to the Redskins? When he got signed, I was like, I can't believe somebody picked him up. And I just couldn't believe somebody picked him up in less than how many hours? Like, I was shocked. Elissa Ennis says she shares the outrage voiced by some across the country in the wake of her ex-boyfriend Reuben Foster being signed by the Washington Redskins just days after his arrest last month on suspicion of domestic battery. She says she and Foster had taken a break and he'd started seeing other people. He invited me to come see him in Florida and I came and he took one of my phones and he slapped me and pushed me. Told him that I was going to tell his new girlfriend that he paid for my flight out there so that's what triggered it. Ennis claims Foster's abuse in that Tampa hotel on November 24th left her with these bruises on her neck and face. He called me out there so we could work on our relationship. And so I was like, I can't believe you're back doing this because we were get, like, we both were seeing therapists and stuff trying to work on our relationship. So I was like, I can't believe you, you're back to doing this. So back to doing this as if this was something that happened before. several times before. Yes, ma'am, like three times. And what did you do? Did you report this to police each time? Well, the two times I did, one time the neighbors called. The neighbors called the police in October. This incident in November, you called 911. Yes, ma'am. Your ex-boyfriend did what? <laughs> took my phone and broke it and slapped me in my face. Did it feel like they did not believe you? Oh, yes, ma'am. I felt like they didn't believe me. Even when I called the police, the 49ers came up there. I have pictures of the 49ers coming up there trying to talk to the police and say, I'm the same ex-girlfriend that sit up there and lied. Earlier this year in February, Ennis accused Foster of battery, but later recanted her story and dropped the allegations. Reuben threw my clothes out the balcony. He threw my stuff out the house. He dragged me down the stairs two, three times. He punched me in my face two, three times, pulled me by my hair, kicked me, spit on me. And then you go to court, and then you recant your story. Yes, ma'am. And, and why'd you do that? Because I loved him. And love will have you doing things that's not in your best interest because the person you love. She told authorities she fabricated yep. the story as part of a money scheme. There were some previous allegations that you referred to as a money scheme, I guess, uh, to extort money. Were you not telling the truth at that point? I was not telling the truth. I was not telling the truth. So what do you say to people who are saying, well, because you lied in the past, that's ruined your credibility now? Well, I did what I had to do for the person I love. I thought that he would change. Anybody in my position, they would have did the same thing if they, you know, shared a family with this person. He used to come crying to me, telling me he didn't have anybody. If somebody come that you love comes crying to you, telling you that they didn't have anybody, you'll do the same thing too. Like, that's why I did what I, I did, because I loved him. Do you still love him? I've been getting help and stuff like that. This is not love. No, I don't do you like that. This is not love. No, I've been getting help. But it's not love. The 49ers released a statement regarding Ennis's allegations that the team attempted to intervene in Foster's arrest last month. The 49ers say they fully cooperated with authorities, assisted in locating Mr. Foster, and in no way impeded the investigation. Foster remains on the commissioner's exempt list pending resolution of this most recent arrest. Adam Schefter joins us now from the Domino's pregame HQ. Adam, what's next in terms of Reuben Foster and his football future? Well, listen, I think that's a question right now that legal authorities and the NFL are all trying to deal with. The Washington Redskins, when they claimed him on waivers from the 49ers and surprised much of the league, did it with the idea that Reuben Foster would be playing in 2019. Now, there's a legal situation that's unfolding. We'll see whether or not he's found guilty, whether he's 
has to serve jail time. That'll be one major issue of this situation. And then, of course, the NFL will have to act. And the NFL, I think, has had a rough couple of weeks here dealing with a couple of these issues. And the NFL is going to want to make sure that it gets this one exactly right. So there are some major obstacles in front of Reuben Foster as the league and authorities, legal authorities, try to sort out his future, which is still a way away from being decided. Long way to go here. Uh, Adam, Melvin Gordon dealing with an MCL sprain in his right knee. He missed last week's game. Uh, what does it look like for this week against the Bengals? When he was running on the side yesterday, and the Chargers have not given up hope that he could potentially be back this week, though it certainly seems like a stretch. And my understanding all along is that the Chargers were hoping that Melvin Gordon would be ready one week from tonight when the Chargers play the Chiefs in a game that could be pivotal in the playoff race in the AFC and for the AFC West title. And so the Chargers are not ready to rule him out for this week just yet. They're still holding out some hope that he could be back, but certainly it looks like he's on track to potentially be back next week if he can't make it back in time for this week's game. And if he can't, it would mean another dose of Austin Eckler and Justin Jackson, who was very impressive in his performance last week against Pittsburgh. We'll circle back to our top story this afternoon. That's regarding Washington quarterback Alex Smith and his injured leg, which unfortunately, Adam, has had some complications. Well, the Washington Redskins released a statement asking everybody to respect Alex Smith's privacy. You heard Diana Rossini detail at the outset of NFL Live that Alex Smith remains hospitalized right now. He's dealing with infections after multiple surgeries to his broken leg and that there is concern that this is a potentially career-threatening injury. Now, look, everybody hopes Alex Smith is okay. That is where everybody's focus is right now. But clearly, the gravity of the situation was reflected in the statement that the Redskins released earlier today asking for people to respect his privacy. Certainly wishing for the best in terms of his health. Adam Schefter, thank you. And other quarterback news, Sam Darnold has been injured. Uh, Todd Bowles was asked if he was ready to name his quarterback, the starter on Sunday, Bull said not yet. Uh, Darnold has made progress, but it remains unclear if he's ready to start. The Eagles and Cowboys face each other for the second time this season on Sunday. It is a close NFC East race. We'll have live reports from both camps straight ahead.